Greetings, and a welcome to our 10th episode of Modern Modding Highlights, and uh, yes, we did just have the old intro. Uh, I know people liked our new intro, but, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, tire out using our little guar friend, so uh, we're just going to use that in every other episode. Uh, but anyway, uh, today we're back with a new episode, uh, taking a look at uh, just the best mods of uh, July 18th through 31st of 2020. Uh, there are about 49 mods uh, released during this time period, and uh, we're just highlighting the top 10 of them here today. And as always, the uh, down links and timestamps are just uh, down below. Uh, so let's begin with our first highlight, which uh, this time around is Concept Art for Vec Ports by Random Pow and HV Onis. A uh, modest expansion to the city of Avec, uh, this mod adds new uh, velothy style docks, ships, and cargo equipment to the uh, waterfront of the St. Alms and St. Don Cantons, uh, providing a bustling harbour for the largest city on Vardenfell, uh, which was uh, previously only served by a single dinky wooden set of docks over by the foreign quarter. Uh, just a really bad design there, Bethesda. Uh, given that uh, Vivek is literally built over water, with a huge population density, and the fact that the game's uh, concept art, you know, originally showed more docks in this exact location, uh, this is just a quite the immersive and lore-friendly addition to Vivek here, and I'd highly recommend uh, using it alongside uh, Vivek Docks by Ravengar, uh, which just adds, you know, more docks in this uh, same style to the Foreign Quarter Canton. Uh, keep in mind, uh, this is actually a, a slice of Rethinking Vivek by Atrionis, which includes a lot more than a concept art for Vivek Ports here, and uh, you'll find a link to that just uh, down below. And last, but uh, not least, uh, this includes uh, compatibility support for Abbott's uh, Scenic, Gondolier, and Boat Travel Services, so, you know, that's just uh, something to keep in mind. But uh, moving on, uh, we're next taking a look at MCAR by SCNR, also known as Magic Casting Animation Replacer. Uh, this mod basically replaces the first person animations for casting magic, including different animations for casting magic on yourself casting magic at a target, and casting magic by touch. Uh, these are just a lot more uh, expressive than the animations in the uh, base game, adding a dramatic sense to, uh, you know, casting magical spells. Oh, with your hands, uh, visually crafting the ball when you cast a fireball, or appearing to uh, summon fire just straight from your uh, fingertips when you cast fire touch. Uh, this mod also appears to uh, replace uh, some of the first-person attack animations just as well, uh, notably with the uh, thrusting animation. And overall, this is just a really uh, neat replacer that's uh, definitely worth checking out here. Uh, next up, we have a plugin-less and adjustable a lower first-person sneak by Seal the Deal, and I still don't know if that's uh, how you pronounce her name, but... Uh, anyway, what this mod does is basically in the uh, title, it adds the ability to adjust the camera for uh, first-person sneaking to uh, almost be as low as you like, with a slider that you can adjust to move the camera just incredibly close to the uh, ground here, or just adjust it so it's a bit lower than uh, the vanilla option. It's a, a really neat change to the camera system, uh, giving you a whole just different perspective of the world when you're uh, sneaking around, uh, you know, trying to uh, steal some loot, and it can be uh, quite convenient for, uh, you know, reaching items you otherwise couldn't, you know, like, say, uh, some gold that uh, fell out of your pockets and rolled underneath the bed, or for uh, finding game-breaking visual bugs when out and about. Oh, 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 someone used the wrong table, just literally unplayable. I kid, of course, but anyway, you get the idea. Uh, this is just a pretty neat and handy mod, and I'd uh, recommend just, you know, checking it out for, uh, you know, yourself here. Uh, going on, uh, we're next uh, taking a look at uh, Fighter's Guild Questline Overhaul by uh, Zaleko. And, oof, this is actually a fairly large mod, so uh, we're not going to be able to just cover everything it does here, but 
Uh, basically, uh, this is a massive overhaul and expansion of the Fighter's Gold questline, adding about a dozen uh, new quests and adding tons of new alternative ways to handle uh, the contracts in the vanilla game. Uh, you no longer have to use uh, violence each and every time. Uh, you could uh, convince the egg poachers, just uh, for example, uh, to come with you and turn themselves in at Fort Moon Moth, or just uh, let them go. Uh, ditto for Graw Ball, and if you're a member of House Talvani, uh, you can warn the uh, Talvani agents up in Caldera instead of, uh, you know, just uh, killing them. Uh, you can even uh, join uh, various bandit groups and do miscellaneous quests for them, uh, you know, instead of uh, just killing them outright, and uh, there's just a ton of other options here and new questing content, including a quest to help uh, Fargoth with uh, Vraskar. Uh, there's a lot that we're uh, skipping over here, so, uh, you know, if you're a fan of the Fighters Guild, uh, you know, you might want to at least give this more a try, but anyway, uh, next up we have uh, TR Heads and Harry Placer, uh, Macom's Heads by Dark Fry, a graphical replacer for NPC heads and hairs entirely built. Uh, this replaces all uh, 336 heads in TR with heads based on, uh, you know, Macom's Races Redone series and adapts 135 of TR's different hair options, uh, you know, just to them, uh, giving the NPCs Atari built a a more modern look in line with, uh, you know, Macom's more uh, realistic style. Uh, this also includes some improved hair textures, and uh, you can see some of this on the NPCs here. Overall, uh, this is just a, a pretty nice uh, graphical enhancement uh, to the uh, largest content mod from Arwind, and if you're using uh, Terry Built and Macom's Races Redone mod, uh, you might uh, just want to, uh, you know, add this to your game. Uh, moving on, our next mod is More Tint of Gods by uh, Celadiel, and I apologize if I'm, you know, still, uh, you know, mispronouncing that name. But anyway, uh, this is uh, basically a MWC remake and combination of Inquisitive Gods by Rubberman and uh, Fligerty's Protective Gods, uh, giving a little more uh, functionality to the so-called Imperial uh, Law Enforces of Morrowind. And now, when you uh, start sneaking around and a god uh, just happens to notice you, uh, they'll follow you around for a bit to, uh, you know, make sure you're not getting into uh, any trouble. Uh, though they will just eventually get bored and uh, leave you alone after a while. Uh, but uh, perhaps more importantly, uh, this mod uh, makes it so that gods will actually protect you from NPCs that, uh, you know, are trying to kill you unprovoked, like say, a band of Dark Brotherhood assassins. And no longer will the town guards just ignore and uh, laugh at your feeble attempts to defend yourself from a league of never-ending assassins. And now they'll actually do something to help here. But anyway, this is just a great mod that uh, comes with a few uh, settings you can adjust here. And I just highly recommend, uh, you know, checking it out for yourself. And next up, we have a uh, Visible Alchemy Success Chance and Persuasion Chance by SKMR uh, Sharma. Uh, technically, this is two mods, but uh, they kind of do the uh, same thing, so I'm just uh, combining them here. But anyway, uh, these uh, basically do what the uh, mod name implies. Uh, they add the actual uh, chance you have at uh, succeeding, either in terms of persuading an NPC with the you know, the admire, taunt, intimidate, or uh, bribe topics, as you can see here. Or also showing you the uh, chance you have at uh, crafting a potion, uh, which is uh, usually tied to, uh, you know, how uh, skilled you are in alchemy. Uh, so before you try to persuade someone or brew a potion, uh, you can just, you know, see what your odds of uh, succeeding are. And uh, while these are both just uh, very minor mods, uh, they are just uh, pretty handy. But going on to our next highlight, we have uh, Watch the Skies by Tio Lao. A, a decently sized mod. Uh, this is a MWC a lure based sky enhancement uh, that includes a new vanilla style cloud textures and uh, uses MWC uh, to create more dynamic weather with more frequent weather transitions. So, uh, you know, 
Uh, you'll see the weather change more often when uh, wandering about Morrowind. And uh, this also includes the ability for weather to change while inside, which uh, previously uh, didn't happen in Vanilla Morrowind. Uh, the weather would be the uh, same outside as just uh, whenever you first went inside a building or interior, uh, regardless of how long you were in there. Uh, but uh, more importantly, uh, this also includes a randomized texture on, you know, weather transition, uh, the sky diversity. So this offers a nice just alternative to sky diversity for uh, more unique uh, weather transitions. But anyway, up next, we have Blighted Blight by Necrolesian. A uh, simple mod, uh, this one just uses NDIRC to uh, make it so that uh, there's a chance that you'll catch a blight disease when out and about during a blight storm. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, there's a mod config menu uh, where you can adjust the uh, chance of uh, catching blight during a blight storm uh, with the default setting at 10%. And you could theoretically set that as high as 100% if uh, you know you really wanted to in any event uh, this is just another really immersive mod uh, that makes blight storms a bit more dangerous and uh, you know if that's something you're into uh, you may want to check it out here but uh, finally we have echoes of the fawn by my lord and now this is just a, a really neat a little mod that's primarily meant for primitive playthroughs uh, basically, when you die, uh, you'll now leave a tombstone uh, marking where you died, and you'll have the option to uh, write an epitaph, uh, you know, for your dead character, and uh, select an item, just one item, uh, from your inventory to leave behind. Uh, this tombstone will appear in all uh, future playthroughs until you activate it, and when you do, uh, you'll get the item you left back with this uh, really cool tooltip that uh, you know, shows the item as a relic with the epitaph that you wrote on it. Again, this is just a really meant for primitive playthroughs, uh, since there is uh, some potential for exploitation uh, with the vanilla game, though you can use it with the vanilla game as well. Uh, but either way, this is just a really unique feature, and it's uh, definitely worth checking out here. But uh, that's it for today, and as always, uh, down links are just down below. So, thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, happy modding, and I'll just, I'll uh, see you all next time.